Hey guys, head on over to ymhstudios.com slash rentals. You can get a seven day pass to watch YMH Live 8, the greatest one yet. I want this guy to be like, and then you look right here in the crotch and you can see <laughs> everything is right here. Full package. Do you want the bigger package? Speaking of packages, I did some homework for your mom's house. <laughs> well, welcome. Welcome to your mom's house. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by Satva, S A A T V A dot com slash the shit. Go there and get $200 off any mattress of your choice. I'm a huge fan. I've slept on all of them. You got to try one. It's hot today, so make sure you <laughs> drink water. Welcome. We're back. Your mom's house podcast. We're back in Austin. Uh, it has been a minute. We were doing the show uh, from Los Angeles yeah. from the old studio. Which uh, they actually they actually put dynamite in there and they blew it up. Oh they my goodness! The studio, yeah. Well, hopefully, we got all of our important tchotchkes out of there. In uh, time. I think some of those things uh, were they lost oh. in the in the damage. Oh no! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, but <clears throat> it's good to be home. It's good to be back. Yeah. Uh, I heard some people lost their lives. It's okay. It was in a very bad neighborhood. Yeah. And the thing is about bad neighborhoods that when you lose people there, it doesn't really matter. No. What is important is to save people in good neighborhoods. Absolutely, you know? Tom. I mean, it was littered with homeless people and the strip mall that was nearby didn't have anything good. It was nothing good. like a Yoshinoya, which nobody ever eats at Yoshinoya, let's be honest. If you want to look back, uh, not too long ago, there was a massive fires in uh, Bel Air and Malibu. And the fire department did the right thing. Mm. They made sure to save those nice people's houses of and course, lives. Of course, of course. They responded in a timely manner. They knew that the fire was going to go into other neighborhoods and they let those fires continue. Yeah. And they saved the valuable homes. Of course. The valuable contributors. And that's why we want to salute the fire departments today of a society <laughs> that value mm. high value people. <laughs> That's what a fire department is for. <laughs> Protecting those who matter. Protecting the wealthy. Yeah. Particularly. Yes. This is true, Tom. Yep. Yep. Well, good to be back. We we got to explore our old LA haunts mm -hmm. for a minute. Um, I, for one, was really, I like to eat my way through every city. Yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah. just did Cleveland, so I was eating a lot of sausage and just real fattening good stuff. Yeah. And I feel like LA is... Sushi for me, sushi, and then Mexicano food. Yeah. And also, Erewhon, which yes. is, let's see how Nadav spelled that. Erewhon is a step up from Whole Foods, let's be honest. It's like Whole Farts is really expensive, but then yeah. Erewhon is where like the Kardashians go. Well, it's go. smaller, it's more exclusive. If I were a fire department, I would protect it first. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you, you put your hose on there first. Yeah, yep. But may I tell you something about Erewhon is that there's a lot of useless shit there. It's like, do you want coconut agave sugar? Like, yeah. no, I don't want any of that stuff. Well, the one percenters like their stuff. They know? like their weird yeah. shit. But you know what I did eat a lot of while I was there? Yeah. At Air Erewhon? What? They're jalapeno keto muffins. Ugh. And they're so disgusting and they're chalky and they get stuck in my throat. But I love them, and I could not stop eating them. Do you ever eat something so disgusting, Oof. but you're like hooked on it? I don't know if I have real um, gnarly taste that people go like ugh to. Well, I disagree. I think you like mayonnaise a lot more than most. I mean, white people love mayonnaise. I mean, first of all, mayonnaise is not like one of these. It's condiments. for white people. Any correct me. <laughs> It's for white. No correction I, needed, man. I'll, I'll tell let you me one, just say I'll the black community thing. does not like mayonnaise. And I'll tell you one thing. I stand against the black community <laughs> uh, on this issue. I really do. And it's one. If, 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 what? If, if I could just oh, be clear about this, God. I don't support black people oh. when it comes to this. 
Mayonnaise lives matter. I mean, I think they're so fucking out of their minds with this, you know. They I, hate it. They do, and they all, it seems like they do it in, in, in unison and yeah. in uniform uh, yes. messages, you know, these mayonnaise. Yes. You know, mayonnaise, it's not <laughs> like a hard-to-find condiment that you're like, do you have a special store that might have mayonnaise? Wait it's a minute. It's a very common condiment. It, it is common, Tom, but white people have also made variants. For instance, a- aioli. Mayonnaise. Hey, whatever. It's fucking yes. mayonnaise. Mayonnaise I, with some yellow, orange stuff. No, in but it. there there are variants. You're right. There's the garlic with Truffle. aioli. There's the spicy mayonnaise. There's there's all different types of mayonnaise. Right. I'm a big fan of all of them. And if that means that I just get to say black people are wrong, <laughs> then I don't mind. You know, I don't mind. Any on behalf of all black people, why do you guys hate mayonnaise? Yeah. Why? What's wrong with you? I mean. I, it's gross. It's not. I don't know, man. Hot sauce is the best, not mayonnaise. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we don't like that shit around here. It tastes like yeah. fucking ranch dressing. It's, I, it's love ranch dressing. I love ranch dressing. I love ranch dressing. I love ranch dressing. You don't like ranch? Too. Nah. I mean, Are, I'm even American. Wait, what's your dressing if you had to go with the dressing? <laughs> hot sauce. No. If it, a, a hot it. sauce and a salad. Stop. Dead ass. But if you had to have a salad <laughs> dressing. <laughs> If you had to have an what? actual salad dressing. Fucking, dude. I'm out of there then. Okay, well, You're what's... You're out of there? I'm out of there. There's no salad. dressing oh my you would God. do? Nah, hot sauce. Well, so then what's the salad What's the salad dressing of black people? <laughs> if you're not going to tell me then what you like, what's, yeah. what do black people like? First of all, what niggas you know eating salads? <laughs> <laughs> hey, not true. You know, I have a black friend and I bought her a salad recently. And I, you're right. It came with ranch. And she was like, no. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She doesn't like mayonnaise Here, either. just say it. They're different. Yeah. <laughs> different. Different. Um, all right. Well, look, let's get this clip going, and then we can get back into this conversation. It's a very, okay. very important discussion. This is. This is a very important conversation. All right. Here, here, here you go. She says, oh, my God, a lesson. You do me a favour and identify yourself. Uh, PC2804. And where are you based? Hanley. Right. Is it part of the police's policy to sit there and stare out members of the public? Who do you think you are? All you've done is eyeball me the two times I've drove past, watch you put the uniform on and get an ego boost. Who do you think you are? I'm a taxpayer. You're here to save me, mate. All right? So explain yourself. I wasn't eyeballing you, mate. You was eyeballing you? I was, I was fucking rubbing neck of you. And you were still looking. Listen, mate. I'm not your average member of the bubble. You can sit there and smirk all you want, right? There'll be a nice letter before claim for you. Explain yourself. This shit is big time. Who is Ranch? <laughs> Don't bring anyone up into this. What? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Mom's House with Tom Segura. Tom Segura. And Christina Pajitsin. Christina Pajitsin. Welcome to your Mom's House. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Pretty cool. Uh, so a lot of people don't know that that's um, that's in Tampa. As uh, <laughs> mm. a Fed smoker that lives in Tampa. Yeah. yeah. That's a really crazy clip. I don't understand yeah. any of it. Yeah. I mean, definitely those Fed vibes though, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Touch my camera through the <laughs> fence, you <laughs> faggot. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, no, this is the UK Fed smoker, I guess. And um, he, he can't, this cop is just like... Hmm? doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just uh, approached by this guy who's really, you know, fired up about the fact that he's being stared at by this cop. Yeah. This guy's like, I'm not looking at you. Can we, can you, do you know what part of, what, what are we talking about? What is this? What, where in where the UK, in UK? Is I, I didn't pick up where, where it was. Let me try to listen. You're the master of accents. I feel like you should have a lock on um, this clip already. Yeah. Oh, here, where? Uh, uh, what's it here? Staffordshire? Staffordshire. Yeah. So this is in England. Yeah. And wh- where's England? Where's England? It's in the United Kingdom. Duh. <laughs> Come on, guys. This is 
<laughs> Third grade stuff. Well, explain yourself. Do you... No, you ain't. You were looking directly at me when I was there and when I was over there. So explain yourself. You're a public servant. I'm a member of the public. Is that part of your policy to intimidate the public? I think not. So address your attitude, lads. All right? Because I'm not your average member of the public, and as, as I'll tell you, like I tell the rest of them, I'll sit off, I'll follow you home, and then I'll put your addresses online and see how you like that. All right? I'm no stranger to Staffordshire Police, lads. All right? So, uh, next time, address your attitude, and don't ever, ever eyeball me again. All right? <laughs> <laughs> This cop has like a really good disposition about this though. <laughs> I think this might be the greatest reaction ever to yeah. a psycho. Well, you know, I noticed that too. I, I think it's actually, it's part of um, shock and processing when someone, because I noticed that with Fed Smoker too, is a lot of times when he would come with the, with the business mm -hmm. that you'd get a lot of <laughs> just, you know, kind of staring. And I think it's because they're like, what's happening right now? And like, I think that's actually some of what's going on. Some of it is he's just like, be calm. You know, yeah. don't don't overreact. But some of it's also like, what is what is happening right now? And you know what ju you just made me think of is the reason why men expose themselves in public is to get the reaction yes. of like, oh no, don't do that. But and I think part of Fed Smoker's joy was getting the reaction. And yeah. this guy perfectly neutralizes Fed yes. Smoker vibes mm -hmm. by don't don't give it any sort of credence. Like right. don't give it. He anything. wants because like the famous, you know. Um, hey, what kind of job, you know, how do you get a job here, fuck face? <laughs> that guy starts to escalate and that fires <laughs> Herc up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even like more, yeah. So that, that's the whole thing is like calm and neutral yeah. just gets them to walk away. Yeah. But if you go, the fuck do you say to me? And he yeah. goes, I'll tell you what I fucking said, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's really interesting. Gosh, that valuable lesson. So if any, yeah. like a Herc comes up to you, yeah. you know what to do. I learned this lesson at home with my family. <laughs> With your sisters and your mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just Neutral. Don't take the bait. <laughs> don't don't ever take the bait. Yeah. Gosh, that is so true. Don't take the bait. Don't get in the fight. Don't get into the fight. That's how you do it. Serious. Now, ser real. Here's the thing. Go well, ahead. Mayonnaise is amazing. Okay, let's bet. Yeah, this is a this is a really big topic. Also, ketchup and mayonnaise together. That's what he likes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa That's whoa. what he likes. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. For, I mean, what you said is, is kind of foul, but did you say <laughs> did you say ketchup? Oh, wow. Oh, instead of ketchup? Yeah, ketchup. I think you mean cats up. Yeah. Uh, ketchup? Yeah. It's pronounced it's spelled cats up in some yeah. parts too, but it's ketchup. Can you say is, ketchup? Is America one of those places where, they, um, <laughs> where it's pronounced? Why like? don't we look up the pronunciation, you know, like our computer lady? I don't think I say ketchup. No. You said ketchup. No, that's what I'm saying. I don't, uh, the Ket correct pronunciation ketchup. might be, uh, it says ketchup. Yeah. Ket ketchup. But I don't say ketchup. that. Yeah, I don't say that. Ketchup. You say cat ketchup. Yeah. 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 I say ketchup. Yeah, you do. I don't say ketchup. Ketchup. Yeah. Ketchup. You know why? I'm not a fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> and it, loses, it, it, uh, it goes great. It goes great with mayonnaise. Mayo and ketchup. Yeah. You blend he, them together. Yeah. He dips his French fries in it. Yeah, the French do that a lot too. Yeah, Europeans. Yeah. Western Europe. Definitely not Eastern yeah, Europe. Yeah, Western Europe does we that a lot. Do, that. Yeah. do you How have, do you do you have ketchup? <laughs> ketchup. Ketchup? You fucking tool. Where do you ketchup. think where do you think you picked up ketchup? Is that southern? Is that like it's your, colloquial. your dad maybe? It's just, yeah. Colloquial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the, you know what the most university people say it like that. No, oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you say? I say ketchup. Yeah. Ketchup. Ketchups. Off. Ketchups. You say ketchups. With like an my S? mother would pluralize it, so I, I hear it say ketchup. That's how I would say. Ketchup. Mm -hmm. Ketchup. Yeah, I like so so so. How do you feel? You don't like Thousand Island. You don't like. I can't believe you don't like ranch. I feel like ranch is like it's so American and delicious. Do you like? Almost everybody likes. Do you ranch. like ketchup? Yeah, do you like ketchup? <laughs> Fucking uh, communist. No, I'm not a big fan of ketchup because it's basically just like weak hot sauce. So right, it's like well it's like sweet. It's kind of sweet. So yeah. yeah, it's like sweet hot sauce. Do you like yeah. mustard? I can fuck with mustard. I can fuck with a good mustard. Like you a know? spicy brown mustard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something good. Yeah. 
Yeah. A good mustard for sure. I like yeah. mustard too. Now, I like all kinds. I don't like Russian dressing. I hate blue cheese. It just tastes like, like, ugh. It's like so chunky. Do you and like gnarly. steak sauce? Steak sauce? Um, I don't know. I don't really have steaks except when I'm with y'all. I don't really eat steaks like that. I don't know. Yeah. You know, actually, that's true. Every time we've taken him out to dinner, even to like steakhouses, he likes to eat the bread. He'll eat bar like baskets and baskets of bread and then eat the steak on top of it. He's got an amazing capacity to eat. It, he does, yeah. It's really crazy. It's so crazy, dude. Is it considered a sauce like, or, or a, a, what is it, a fucking dressing? If you just put like oil and vinegar in the salad? That, 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 yeah. That's dressing. Is that yeah. what you do? Because I, I guess that's as far as I go, yeah. Yeah, that's like the crazy. cleanest kind of healthiest one you can do, basically. That, that's balsamic. Bal bal what? Balsamic? <laughs> Balsamic? Ba balsami? Oh my God. How do you think you spell bals balsamic? I know this one. I know this one. <laughs> B A L S A. Are you sure? A A M I C. Balsamic? So, so how. <laughs> that's it. That's it, though, isn't it? Wait a minute. That's wrong? No, he's right, but then why did he oh. say balsamic? Balsamic. No, no balsamic. Is, have, is this another balsamic. Ba base pro shop? What, how, am I, how are you supposed to say it? Well, Ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it's said. So wait, did, do black people, like, do you just learn it, like, when you're born? Like, oh, mayonnaise sucks. Like, is this culturally passed down? or did It's you, very cultural. You try it, and you're like, this is not for me. And then every other black person was like, this is not for me. Yeah, it, you know, it's probably because our, you know, culture doesn't cook that shit into stuff. So by the yeah. time we eat it, it's like a weird-ass taste. Yeah, you know? it's not It's probably like that, yeah. Okay. I don't know. If you're a small business owner, you know how important it is to be ready for the insane holiday season. And if you haven't started preparing for the chaos of holiday mailing and shipping, you're already falling behind. Luckily, Stamps.com has everything you need to make your life a whole lot easier. It's the 24-7 post office that you can access from anywhere with no lines, no traffic, and no hassle. Stamps.com is your one-stop shop for all your shipping and mailing needs. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Get access to the USPS and UPS services you need right from your computer. And with inflation on the rise, every dollar counts. Protect your margins with major discounts on USPS and UPS rates up to 86% off. Get ahead of the holiday chaos this year. Get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up at Stamps.com slash mom for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com slash mom. The wait is almost over. A new football season is about to begin. Get ready for the NFL Week 1 action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. To celebrate the return of football, DraftKings is giving new customers a can't-miss offer. Bet just $5 on any football game and get $200 in free bets instantly. Want more action for opening night? Everyone can experience the thrill of DraftKings' early win promotion. Get up seven, you win. Bet on any NFL team of your choice, and if your team leads by seven points at any point during the game, you get paid instantly, even if your team loses. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code MOM to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's code MOM, only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And there's also things that I'm supposed to like that I don't like. For instance? Like, I don't think caviar is good. I've tried it a few times. I yeah. think it fucking tastes disgusting, and I don't know what the big deal I'll is. I'll say this about caviar. I don't think it's disgusting. I, um, I like it. I enjoy it. I don't go, oh, my God, you know, this is, oh, I can't, I can't believe that we get to have caviar. Like this is my yeah. favorite. Yeah. I just kind of eat it. I wouldn't even say indifferent. I, I'm, I'm favorable to it, but I'm not like, you know, flipping out for it. And there yeah, is a difference. There's out. a huge difference in the quality stuff, you know, like you can get really high quality stuff. You definitely note the difference. Um, that's a good uh, point is oysters. 
I hate um, oysters too. Yeah, you can definitely taste the difference in quality. Sea urchin is one where I I learned why sea urchin um, sucks sometimes. Why? It's because it's one of the only like uh, fish products that they don't have to dispose of because it doesn't go basically bad. Like you buy fish if you're a restaurant, um, you know, I don't know, a day or two, they're like, okay, we have to dispose of this fish now. But the sea urchin doesn't go bad mm. for a while. So you can, be, you can be served sea urchin that's five or six days old. It's not gonna make you sick, but it's not fresh anymore. And that restaurant a lot of times will still hold on to it <clears throat> and serve it. So what you're eating is just like not fresh. Ooh. You don't really know that. Then you go have fresh sea urchin somewhere and it is notably different. And what's the urchin again? Is it the orange bubbles? Yeah, it's like... I hate it too. It's, it's a lot of... Um, it has like this almost spongy-like quality oh, to yeah. it, you know? I'm, I don't think I've ever eaten it. Yeah. Ugh, no yeah. thanks. But that fresh tastes way different. So what... What you're not being told when you've had bad ones or ones you didn't like is like you're basically eating kind of rotten sea urchin, but oh. it's not going to make you sick. It's right. not like five day old salmon or something, you know? Right. It's not going to make you sick, but it doesn't taste as good it as fresh. It doesn't taste fresh. as good as fresh. Yeah. Got you. Mm -hmm. And you know what I tried for the first time in my life? Because I was in Cleveland at mm -hmm. Hilarities and they have it on the menu. What? Dom Perignon. Oh, yeah. And I thought to myself, I, I says, Christine. Mm-hmm. You deserve a bottle of Dom Perignon. Mm -hmm. And they they bought me a bottle, Hilarities, and yeah. I, it honestly was no big deal. It was it's, it was just very dry. It's like, bubbly it's, champagne. And can I tell you though? Yeah. The Traders Joe brand, this brand called Schloss Bibrich, which is like a fifteen dollar bottle, yeah. tastes better to me than Dom Perignon. That's one of those things where the name is so well like the brand is such an incredible brand name. Because yeah. it's associated with luxury. When you're a kid, you don't know anything about anything. You learn things like Rolex, yeah, Dom, right, yeah, Mercedes, yeah. and these are the brands of like greatness, like aspirational brands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then through your own life and experience, maybe you get to try each of these, and they have their own effect on you. But I'm somebody like you when it came to this. Like the, I was like, oh, that's rich people stuff. Yeah, and I remember trying. I got to try it in high school. Uh, somebody had it for like um, uh, you know, like a prom or something, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And then yeah. you kind of your like third sip, you're like, "I mean, yeah, yeah, it's good, I guess." I, I, I guess it tastes, but I will say the good thing is because it wasn't sweet. Mm -hmm. There's, it's, it tasted like it wasn't as sugary, right? So I didn't have a hangover from it the next day because yeah. it was good quality. You could tell. And the cheap stuff will give you a hangover because it's full of sugar, I think. Maybe. I don't know enough I about champagne. Know. I learned that, you know, the well, that time that I drank that $5,000 bottle. That's crazy. Did um, you tell that story on this show? I'm sure I did a while ago. When I, I think about I, it a lot. I had dinner with uh, Dana White and, and Brogan and a couple other people, and he ordered multiple bottles of it. And uh, It's crazy. It was pretty crazy that we had... That particular bottle was a bottle of a red from Italy, and um, it was really good. Everybody liked it, right? But when you learn the price, you go, I don't know. Does this taste this many times better than a $100 bottle of wine? No. And the answer is no. But then you learn that the reason you're paying or someone is paying that much is really just because of the exclusivity of it. It's because that make that vintage makes a small number of bottles. So there's only, you know, the less there is of something. Right, the more the, rare. The more rare, and if there's demand, the price goes up. If they made, you know, 200,000 bottles of that thing a year, the price wouldn't be that. But if they go, we make 20 cases a year, mm -hmm. that's their price. It's and capitalism, homie. It's the way it goes. But, so the yeah, flavor yeah, yeah. is good, but there is this point where you're like, this is how much, this, like this is it's fucking not that. crazy. But there's also stuff where like grapes are from such like they only grow yeah. every so often in this specific region and the minerals that are in the wine, maybe because yeah. it's rare or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. I, I don't, I guess there are investments too, like wine, like some rich Absolutely. people buy bottles of oh, wine. Yeah. There's and people that have incredible wine collections. That just drink their investment, which is 
drink or Interesting. pass it on or sell their yeah all yeah. these things yeah but i think a lot of this stuff is turning uh south right now a lot of the luxury stuff because of the recession the yeah the recession that has i guess i don't know if it's officially begun but yeah it's still not happening yet they uh, say <laughs> yeah but things are thing you can see that um yeah. prices of luxury items are going down oh. second i mean you know in the aftermarket interesting mm -hmm. interesting tom so that's usually because less people are going to be buying them you know and you know i was actually upset with myself that i don't enjoy caviar because yeah. it's so eastern european like and it's so fancy you're supposed yeah. to be you're, you're sophisticated if you like yeah it. and i'm like am i a, such a donkey that i don't understand why this is amazing and maybe i am a donkey because i don't like it <laughs> You know what I like about caviar? Yeah. That cracker. Remember last time we had it in LA? Awesome. And they give you the cracker and like that chive you, and the sour cream. I could eat that all day, dude. Like one a pizza thing of that. I'm very comfortable saying about you. You do <laughs> not have a sophisticated palate. <laughs> it's very clear. Can, can I? And you know what, though? I'm done being ashamed of it. I'm trash and I like trashy food. Cool. I love trash food. Yeah. yeah. I just bought a thing. Own it fresh shaky cheese yeah in the house and i i, I use that over fresh parmesan any day yeah, i hate you, it you, sometimes you eat it just right out of the I thing did. Yeah. i did i ate out of my hand today <laughs> i pour the shaky cheese in my palm and then i lick it out i just did it today right before i came here well this is because this, <laughs> this is who you're from of one man and one woman <laughs> Family ties shall be based on marriage or the relationship <laughs> yeah. between parents and children. To sum up, the mother is a woman, the father is a man, and leave our kids alone. Full stop, end of discussion. <laughs> Very cool. He's so popular in the... Uh, in some circles. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. The, the younger Hungarians, not so much, but like the older peeps, they're yeah. down with Victor. Big sure. time. I mean, isn't he, is he speaking at CPAC there? Isn't that that conservative, um, <laughs> like, uh, right? Like fun, whatever it is that fuels the, or funds the Republican <laughs> arm. Yeah, most conservative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, bring in fucking Victor. <laughs> yeah. Victor Orban. Yeah. Well... That's what my people want. Yeah. Leave my people alone. That's what they like. Leave they our like, kids alone. Men, he said full stop. Full end of stop, discussion. End of discussion. Yeah. Full stop. That's British. No Hungarians don't say full. He picked that yeah. up from the Brits. Well, yeah. I mean, he's, he's learning he's British. Speaking English is yeah. a second language. So full stop. You know, we had, I just met somebody that went to Hungary and they went to um, the Bulletin. They're like, yeah, we went to the Bulletin. It was great. I'm like, what's the Bulletin? Exactly. So if you had your choice of places to go, would you go, go ahead and Google Lake Bulletin. It's just like kind of a, I mean, I know no offense to the hungos listening, but Bulletin is not the best body of water. It's just a body of water. It's out outside. There. Yeah, it's a little grayer in person. I've been there. I don't okay. know how it got blue, but when I was a kid, that's what it looked like. <laughs> that's what I got to see. That's where I went as a kid. And it was like an old rusty water slide and and not very good but i guess it's better now and my parents would force me to go there in the summertime it was terrible i liked my memory God. my best memory of uh hungary was when i got to budapest <laughs> i got picked up by a driver who was hungarian and he spoke uh hungarian obviously some english but he spoke really good spanish oh because he was a tennis player and when he was like when he was younger and so his family when they were trying to kind of develop his you know his potential moved to spain for a while so we ended up um speaking in spanish in the car which was fun you know it was just like um rapping with this guy and in, in uh um in hungry and spanish and he's a young guy still and uh he's like oh you you know i i i shared a few hungarian words and he was like oh good good he's like what you know what are you excited about i was like oh i'm excited to shoot a porn you know <laughs> while i'm here and because i knew that the industry is there and he goes i can set this up for you and i was like no i'm kidding he goes i'm not i can yeah. get you everything he's yeah like, it's very easy i'm like oh my god yeah he was just like very right on easy. top of it yeah a lot of strip clubs last time i was there and many girls so many women women's. good women men stop fucking with our children you know shoot children. your scene we, we shoot it we put it up for you very easy 
We got to go to Hungary. When are we going to take our children there to see my heritage? Uh, take them to Lake uh, Bolotan. Bolotan. Yeah. <laughs> it isn't. So, man, it, that, they make it look way nicer. Yeah, that's a nice photograph. That is, listen, last time I was there, it did not look like that. It's just a gray lake. And like, it's so, it's so sad. There's just stones up until the water. And then you take a ladder down into the dirty water. You go, It goes up to your waist, maybe. And, you know, there's good food. Look how many people are there. It's really not the Riviera, okay? They make it out to look better than it is. Okay. The only good thing is Longosh, this Hungarian treat that you can get in the summertime out there. I mean, I used to just hide and smoke cigarettes in abandoned Russian bunkers when I would go there. I just hated it. Yeah. But look at this. The Guardian wants you to look at the lily pads and shit. I mean, I don't know. She seems happy. Yeah, maybe they really did a, a redo on this bullet song, but... Yeah, it seems... When I was growing, the only thing I could get too was like alcohol, yeah. like like the stuff that made you go blind that they make out there. <laughs> yeah. like this like, what's that called? Moonshine. They yeah. make their own moon, palinka or whatever out there. Feels like that. That would be uh, very common in Hungary. Yeah. See, this is the kind of this is the shit that I remember. Just like that looks way shittier right yeah, there. Yeah, super shitty. Yeah. Did you have to do like Peruvian shitty things and pretend they were cool too? Like I had to pretend like Bolton was rad when I went because my relatives would take me. And you have to be like, yeah, this is amazing. Oh, like, I yeah. live in LA. I go to the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> this an fucking sucks. Uncle. Yeah, see how shitty that is? That's what it's like. That's what it's like. My uncle took me on a tour one time <laughs> uh, of like all the churches and like, you know, the, the tunnels that were in them <laughs> and, and explained to me all, you know, and, and with a guide. And I was like, <laughs> I was 14. I was like, yeah. Uh. And he's like, let's go to the next one. And you oh, go in God. there and it would have like a passageway underneath, you know, of, of like whatever, 500 year old. And you, you know, you see it one or two and you're like, oh, cool. And then he's like, we will now go to the next church and you will see how that's laid out. Churches. Like, I know. Fucking 14 years old, man. <laughs> I don't want to see all these churches. Is it, that's so funny. Cause that's what they did to me too. Like, let's go look at this church and this, I'm like, I don't want to see a church. I'm a teenager. Then you, with, when you get older, you realize they're just trying to show you, like, you know, culture and culture, shit. and also something they're proud of, right? Because it's yeah, architecturally it's impressive, and yeah, there's history to it. But, but you're 14; you want to go smoke cigarettes and yeah, find alcohol and yeah. find chicks. Let's party, man! Let's party. Let's party. You know what you would like in in Budapest? And anybody listening, if you're going to Budapest, yeah. go see the Terror Haas. The Terror Haas Museum. It's Terror House Museum. Mm -hmm. It's a museum dedicated to how the KGB tortured people. And That's what the cool. Nazis did to people, it's Very fucking cool. intense, dude. The Terror Haas, it's on Andrasi Utsa. It's so fucking cool. It's like a history of how they basically tortured Hungarians. That's it right there? Yeah. House of That's Terror. That's a real tank. They lowered it in from the ceiling. And it's like how the Soviet Union basically fucked up its own citizens. It's pretty neat. That's, That's pretty just cool. the outside. You know, there's like, they show you like the torture cells. There's one I'll never forget where the cell is shorter than how a person can stand. Meaning if you stand in the cell, you have to hunch uh -huh. over and then yeah. they would fill it with water just to fuck with you. Like that kind of shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you like it, right? <laughs> I thought you're into this stuff, man. I mean, it's fascinating to see how, how depraved and evil people can get. Um, it's crazy that we do this to each other. You know? No, well, the Germans and the Russians. Yeah, but I mean, just human beings. They're not good people. Human beings oh, do it to each other. I'm just kidding. It's no, just I know wild. it is terrible, but it is an interesting uh, museum. I would say the like if you like museums, this is not for you, but it's for you know, like if you want to see art and stuff. <laughs> Boring. Yeah, art's gay. Yeah. I'd rather like this one's fucking way cooler. See cool, this? Right? You're right. You're right. You know, Definitely. it's interesting. Like you'll cry and stuff. Here's maybe. somebody, by the way, I'll show you that um, uh, Victor Orban, the <laughs> Hungarian president, would not like. Okay, this is a a tailor in, uh, I believe, in China. Repay here is part of the Japanese mafia. He's, he's flown down to Hong Kong, Hong Kong, just to make a suit from me. He the saw mafia. all my videos and he wanted me to help him create his signature style. I'm going to go down on my knees because they make them very short in Japan. Come on in. Look at the dip into the back. It gets better, and we will look at his ass in a second. <laughs> Let me show you the waistcoat. You know how I like opening up boys. Uh, you are over 18, right? He's over 18. You heard that, right? Oh, 
God, what? Uh, Opening up boys, is that what Japanese it's cranes like? for the Yakuza right here. Double-breasted waistcoat. Head up. Shawl collar, wide shawl collar to go with the wide peak lapel. Absolutely locked in. Cranes on the back. There's the ass. Japanese gorgeous young boy ass. How do you feel, my brother? Really good. The material is nice and light and the perfect color that I wanted. You know, dark green, blood green. It's the color. Awesome. This guy's a fucking animal. <laughs> oh, he's fucking. Oh my god, talking about this sweet ass. Dude, uh, can you so can you pull up his page? Like, what are we doing? We should be fucking just watching his yeah, videos. There should be a deep dive on this guy. Wait, first of all, are you supposed to tell people you're Yakuza? Or are you I think to... he's fucking with him. I think he's making a joke. You oh, know, I think he's making But a he's joke. 18. Yeah, he's making aggressive jokes about, you know, whatever. But I don't know if that's something he does with like every every guy that comes on. Oh, no, there's an actual little kid. Oh, God. Let's not. Let's see the other stuff. I want to see him talk to adults. Oh, Jesus. He's a copper. You can tell by his socks. Only coppers wear these socks. Peter here is my hired guard. And this jacket is the bribe that I've provided with him. His job is to stop all you haters from coming after me. What have I made for him today? A lavender jacket. That suits his character so he's much. Touching because him a lot. he's on the payroll, oh. I can feel him up as much as I want. This is super soft, 100 pure silk Marzoni. Can you see my hands? Don't stop rubbing him. Patch pockets, <laughs> hand needle and thread, dot, 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 pick stitching uh. everywhere on a wide peak lapel. Jesus my Christ. My bucket breast pocket with the curve and kick, hands down, please. The peak on my pocket square, real Marzoni buttons. I have the boy absolutely gift wrapped in he doesn't like tight 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 but since this is a bribe he gets tight 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 we will not look at his butt because i didn't make him the shorts we will look inside the jacket peter allows me to open him up jesus he christ loves oh. other men opening him up right peter oh I need a tight jacket to rip off glorious inside very happy customer tell him you're happy oh absolutely <laughs> never been happier all right this is Skip to the next one. I will say he hid Peter's gut very nicely. And no, the jackets. Ama- suit jackets, suits in general, there's a reason why they've lasted generations is that it can make any man, it, it can basically make any man look good or the best version you could oh, look. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, suits are amazing. And if you are trying to cover something up, you have some flaw Getting into a suit is the best idea. Yeah, the best thing you Peter's can do. body is, what is it, 10 pounds of shit in a five pound <laughs> bag. But when he wears that lilac yeah, jacket. Yeah, yeah. He looks well, like, stunning. Well, poor Peter's, I mean, he's an older man. Come yeah, on. Yeah, but he's a, you know, he doesn't matter. You There's gotta, the, you, gotta, you gotta try to hold your shit together. You have to try, but Jesus, give him a break. I'm sorry, he looks good in the suit. He does look I'm good in the suit. Trying to compliment the okay, suit. Okay, let's see him sexually harass a couple more people. <laughs> oh, God. Tell them. My name is Nick Thomas. And how did you find me? Instagram. This guy was stalking me everywhere. He just showed up on live stream after live stream after live stream. I'm listen, man, you're going to pull the trigger? He goes, I cannot wait to get to Hong Kong to pull the trigger. He goes, he go, I go, no, you, you can't come here. Send me your measurements. He goes, forget about it. I'm coming to see you. I've seen so much of you. And he really showed up. He endured quarantine to see me. And oh. now I have him absolutely stacked in my signature details. Look at this. Horn button, hand needle and thread, dot, 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 pick stitching, my fish mouth lapel, a la James Bond, accent color in the buttonhole, Barquetta breast pocket, peak of the pocket square, Roshan's undersized pocket flaps, slanted pocket flaps, kissing ticket pocket, fully lined pocket okay. flaps. Gauntlet cuffs, baby. I love this. Pick stitch gauntlet cuffs. Maybe the next one. Gauntlet cuffs. Well, Primary hold on. Buttons and horn. Until he gets to the ass. Secondary mo- buttons and mother of pearl. Fully functional cuffs. Accent color down here to match the one up there. We've got the same thing. I mean, it's pretty amazing, his detail. I, I think he's a phenomenal tailor. Oh, oh. Gift wrap in my 4D Uh-oh. fit. Who says I can't gift wrap a big man? And we're going to look at his ass, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because everybody in a sand sealer pants <gasps> wants to show off their ass. Half lining for Hong Kong because we are hot, hot, hot here. When you're in my pants, you're happily show off your ass. Are you happy? Extremely. Thank you. Young man. T- I mean. I almost want to send Zolo to Hong Kong. And he would have a field day with baby Zolo. His cute little 21-year-old tush. That guy would molest him. 
I mean, do you think this guy, he's just, he's tailoring all day and just crushing ass all night? <laughs> yes. I mean, Hong and Hong Kong. Kong is a 24 seven city, you know, like that's a city <laughs> you can go out at like four in the morning. <laughs> and I just feel like he's probably been like, oh, I fucked half the city or yeah. something, you know? And anything you want and anything you want to find, you're going to find in Hong and Kong. And here's the truth. I'll be honest with you. Okay. Okay. I want to reach out. <laughs> I know. I really want to reach I out. I want you to get a suit with him, but I don't want him feeling you up. He's going to feel me up. It's part of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, if you hit him up, seriously, yeah. I'm like, look, Tom Segura, yeah. famous comedian. Do you make him? Do we fly him out? No, I'm going to Hong Kong. You're going to go to Hong Kong? Yeah. Oh, my God. Sam. Even that has like some kind of like <laughs> CD after party vibes. vibes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, athlete celebrities. Yeah. yeah. He's got famous people. Okay. I wonder if he gives them the bit. Oh my oh god! Oh my god! It's like Clinton. You know, what'd be great is if this was just a recent thing. Naomi like he Kent. just started to open up like this, where he's just yeah. like, "I go out. I now I fucking grope dudes." <laughs> like you know, he was super professional with some of these people. With Clinton, he had to be sure. right. Well, I don't actually, know. I don't know. Oh, Michael Palin. Yeah. There's George H.W. Oh, gosh, she's so official. I had no idea. Yeah, it's good stuff. Well, and I think that is something that maybe happens with age is where you're like, I don't give a shit anymore. I'm just going to be eccentric. Yeah. Um, yeah, who's the other guy? Is that like his dad maybe taught him the biz or something? Could be. A lot of this stuff yeah. is passed down, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Very, very impressive. Do you think his dad spanked boy asses? I think this is all him. <laughs> Second generation I stuff. Think, I think this is. Oh, Sam. look, Sarah Palin got her butt spanked by him. Oh yeah. Oh, by the dad. Dang, that's cool. Yeah. Really nice suits, though. My goodness. No, I, look, I mean, clearly this guy they had, does good work. There's really good. Work. Work. I like the blue suit that go, he's in. Go with the back Yakuza to the guy. other page. He's so uh, cute. Previous page and uh, athletes, because I feel like he might be maybe a little friskier with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that didn't. Same page. Looks like the same. Yeah, that's not fair. You can't do that. Website's broken, it looks like. Oh, uh, okay. oh Olivia Newton-John. Yep, Bruno Mars is there. Wow. God, this is going to be my new favorite uh, rabbit hole to go down every I day. I know. You have to find him next time you're in Hong Kong for sure. Absolutely. And make a sketch. Show us what it was like to hey, get man. assaulted by that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, this guy, I want this guy to be like, and then you look right here in the crotch and you can see <laughs> everything is right here. Full package. Do you want the bigger package? Speaking of packages, I did some homework for your mom's house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, apropos our discussion of Henry Cavill, which mm -hmm. who can forget? Um, I watched Man of Steel mm -hmm. just to go on a dick hunt, just to see... <laughs> If I could get any kind of yeah. intel yeah. on what that looks like. And unfortunately, the suit, it's really not that telling. So I don't have much to report. Other than uh, I was a little disappointed in their choice of co-star, his love interest. Yeah. Not cute enough for Henry Cavill. Oh, um, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, look, I think he's stunning and I really wish they would have. I think sure. her name is, is Amy Adams. Is that her name? Amy Adams. She's very lovely. No, no disrespect. Amy. Uh, yeah, I, no I, disrespect. She's very talented. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm just saying my guy deserves a little, you know, I mean, she's a little, she knows her type. Yeah. Her type in show business. That's like, that's like they're casting me as his lady. I, you know. It should be somebody, Margot Robbie or now, something. Now, what do you think? Let me ask you this. What's the real life? No, nobody gets it all, right? Yeah. yeah. Nobody gets it all. Yeah. Physically. Yeah. Give, he's blessed. He's also supposed to be very smart. Oh, wow. Like he's an intelligent guy, I'm saying. Kind of a nerd, likes Jeez. nerdy things. So what is, what's the big flaw? What's the thing where you're like, ah, oh, Jesus. What do you think Interesting. it is? What it, okay. What if the flaw is that he's he's into like the nerdiest stuff and it's totally something you're not into, like trains or Yeah, yeah. He he, he apparently I learned this from our show. 
is that he <laughs> live streamed himself uh, like um, putting together a computer, oh, like, you know, no. like putting the parts together and like assembling it. <laughs> but I don't think that's a big enough flaw. I think there's got to be okay. a glaring okay. flaw. Okay, okay, okay. Here's here's the deal breaker. Yeah. For me, there's 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 a few. Okay. Anything where you're fervently into it. For instance, there's this girl on TikTok who I did a, a side by side with, and she was like, "This sign is very wrong." And it was like the word feminine care at Target. It's wrong because not all women are menstruators, and not all menstruators like somebody that's an activist oh. and like super like you can't even have a good time with them. He, he cares about the public. Well, enough. like like. <laughs> <laughs> but like, let's say he's such an activist and everything is political and everything is like an offense to him. That would really bother me. Oh, or oh, right. Like super I can't woke. take it. Yeah, yeah like yeah. just relax, have a Coke he's and a not, smile. But let's just say not. if you don't know, it could be like. And then secondly, is somebody with very strict eating habits. That probably would is true. fucking destroy me. Like I'm a vegan and I don't eat egg, but I don't eat cheese and why I only eat oats. And, no, and I'd be like, Fuck that's off. for sure there. I mean, he. Definitely has to take care of himself to look like that. So he's probably has very strict eating habits. But he, but he would also have to preach to me about why he does the veganism. Yeah, that would be a thing. <sighs> and I'd have to hear about the cruelty to animals and why you shouldn't what wear leather. Like old school, uh, uh, like Downton Abbey style <laughs> when it comes to sex where he's like, I will never put my mouth in your nether regions. You know, he's like, that's where you go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, like he, he won't. He, oh, that would, that would, that's a deal breaker. Right. He's just like, oh. And he thinks a woman's body is unclean, unclean. Yeah, but he's not. He probably fucking. He'll probably spit in your you face. Don't right out of the gate. You don't know. You don't know. No, you don't know. Wait. So, what would be your deal breaker? Deal breaker for like a super hottie. Yeah. Oh man. So if she's physically perfect, right? That's what we're going with. She's physically perfect. I mean, obviously, if she's religious, like too religious. Oh yeah. And she's like, you know, Tom Jesus oh, yeah. says Margot Robbie's. She's perfect. That's who I wanted to see Superman with, honestly. Yeah, I would. Uh, Honestly, I she would, plays Barbie, dude. I would spend time with her. Yeah, everybody would. I'd lick her beaver. She's perfect. Yeah. Who doesn't want to lick fucking Margot Robbie snatch? She's perfect. Okay, but go ahead. So what's your? So it's Margot Robbie. Um, and she's like, is Jesus your personal Lord and Savior? Like that's deal breaker, right? Yeah, I mean, if she was super religious, that's out of the gate. Um, if she. Uh, I don't know if she just laughed at stupid shit all day, you know, that's a real deal breaker too. Like if her, like what she finds funny made me go like, I think like, that's an actual deal. I actually feel like that's a like for, deal Like for instance, you come home and she's like, oh my God, babe, good news. The Big Bang Theory marathon is on. Oh uh, yeah. Well, and, couldn't, I mean, it just couldn't last. And she's LOLing. Yeah. It's like, like every stupid sitcom. You try. Here's the thing. You would try. You'd be like, oh, that, yeah. But I think that actually, it's not just about watching that Big Bang Theory. It's going to bleed into other things that, like, it's a taste your, thing. Yeah, yeah, your taste, your humor has to kind. You don't have to the same sense of humor, but you can't be like, you, where you don't find any of the same things funny. That's that's a tough. big deal. You have to you have to have some of them have to line up. That's so true. Um, that's yeah. so true because I can't even be friends with people that don't share a sense of humor. That's that's really basic. Uh, if she never knew what she wanted to do or what she liked, that would make me crazy. That is the most annoying trait. Super annoying trait. I don't know. Whatever. You would, again, you would like... God. You would tolerate it for a minute, but ultimately you would just be like, I can't. Because that's the thing. All the superficial stuff has a has an expiration date. Yeah. And I don't mean like literally it does in that so many people will age and they won't be as beautiful. They become handsome women. But like they, <laughs> but I mean, it has an expiration date in how long you can tolerate it. Yeah. You know, you can just, you just can't tolerate that stuff for that long. <sighs> you just go like, no, I can't do this. Yeah. I think anybody that's too political. Oh yeah! If I would have to hear about politics, All I'd be like, dude, I really fucking. If, or if somebody can't. is super offended by, <laughs> you know, words and expressions and thoughts that don't line up with theirs. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, if, if they're always being like, "Can you believe?" Yeah. What the Republican Party? I, did oh, you're like, dude, I don't you're care. Like, yeah, I fucking don't I care. You know, it's another annoying, but small, but mighty annoying thing. Yeah. And you and I. 
know people and like our families or whatever, the person that insists on getting the photograph of everything you do. Every moment. Yeah. yeah. Come on guys, get together. It's like, can we just enjoy? Yeah. I don't want, I don't need to commemorate every moment right. of my life. I'm, I'm probably never going to look at this photo to be fair. You know ever. what actually you, you bring that up and I, cause I was just at Niagara Falls and of course I took photos, I took photos, but what stands out to me, like what I recall the most are the moments where I wasn't taking a photo. Yeah. <laughs> where you're just standing there looking at this thing. Like the, right. the, the might and the power of, of that the waterfall. Yeah. And like the, and I'm, I have burned into my memory those moments, not the moment of the camera up taking the pictures, you know? Yeah. And they have the, you know, there's this, uh, a tale that, uh, or this, um, what is it called? The famous lore that, uh, if you stand and you stare long enough that you'll want to jump in. Oh, cool. And I wanted to. Really? You know? Yeah. Apparently about 40 people do a year. Yeah, 40? That's yeah. it. A year? On the Canadian side or the American side? Oh, I don't know which side, but, hmm. you know, they die. Yeah. yeah. No, I get it. I understand yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but I wonder if that's, I wonder if the Golden Gate Bridge gets more jumpers than the Niagara Fall. Interesting. Can you please Google that? Who commits suicide? What structure more? That's interesting because the Niagara Falls, can you survive? You can't survive that, right? You can. It's very not like common. Yeah. Well, it's also not common to survive Golden Gate. Well, no, because you're, it's like hitting cement. Right. Such so a high. So both of them, usually you're going to. You're going to die. You're going to fail. Yeah. But so, so, people, yeah. So you felt pulled. 20, 30 people a year go over the falls. The majority of them die or deaths or suicides. Most most take place from the Canadian, Canadian Horseshoe side. Falls. Many of those suicides are not publicized by <laughs> officials. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Canada side takes all the suicides. Yeah. Not the Americans. It's real easy to hop over. Yeah. Yeah. I thought about it a lot. Okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we can talk about this on no, YouTube, just can we? Staring at that oh, okay. water. It was drawing me in. It was drawing me in. Okay. All right, Tom. Uh, <laughs> okay. No, no, but see, no. let's see how many a year. Yeah. Not between 1937 and 2012. <laughs> like, I don't want to do the math. Yeah, about the same. Oh. Yeah. To dead tie. Tit for tat. <laughs> oh, yeah, Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> We'll see you at the falls. <laughs> yeah. Um, I too have been to Niagara Falls, but on the American side. Yeah. And I took many pictures that day. And guess how many times I've looked at those photos? So many times. Fucking 0.0. .0. Did you ever think about taking a dip while you're there? <laughs> I did want to take a barrel over it, like in the yeah. cartoons. Yeah, yeah. And oh, I people do that too. And they think they'll be fine. <laughs> and they're not. <laughs> the force. Uh, that, that's the thing that you I think it's 700,000 gallons a second or something's falling Shut over. Up. I swear to God, <laughs> it is so powerful. Okay, let's see how fast it is. Can you Google how fast you would fall from Niagara Falls? Yeah. I'm wondering what the velocity is. Yeah, that power. Because actually, now hold on. Now, yeah. Yana, when we're thinking about suicide, if you're going to jump, yeah. that's just your own body weight that gets pulled right right jumping off the bridge the let's bridge say. sorry so or like just... if one were to jump off anything but when you <laughs> when you go at the falls you're under you're the getting pulled and pushed and pushed so so but i'm saying hard <laughs> <laughs> it's real hard what yeah. would be faster yeah do you know what i'm saying okay what are you trying to tell us no dog uh that well, from a physics perspective 68 miles per hour is what you with, with the the Niagara Falls pushing you down. And really? what about, okay, so what about just jumping off of a bridge? Let's say a hundred and, I don't know, 80 pound adult. Because that, how that fast velocity, do you hit the water jumping off the Golden God, Gate he's Bridge? He's never going to figure this yeah, I know. out. Be here to yeah. fucking, I don't think weight matters, right? Because gravity just, you fall. Force at the same equals rate. mass times acceleration. 9.8 meters per second squared. Who knows meters squared? <laughs> Okay. No, because listen, if you drop a penny off the Empire State Building, theoretically, it could fucking, can it kill somebody? Okay. Didn't you hear that? Uh, uh, <laughs> 68 miles an hour is fucking, you're moving, dude. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's, you're jamming on the one. Yeah. But I want to know how, how, how fast you hit the water off the bridge. Me too, because it's the impact that kills you. It'll break Jumping all your bones. Jumping off the Golden Great Bridge. Just put that there. <laughs> just 
modify the end of that. Because I'm wondering which is a which is a better death. Not jumping into the Golden Gate oh Bridge. My God. Okay. Okay, 75 miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> Jumpers hit the water at set. Yeah. Jumpers die. Dude. So impact trauma. So you're dying from like breaking all your bones, your head, head crushes. Yeah, if, you, yeah. if you jump out of a car at 75 miles an hour, it's not going to go well. <laughs> so what do you die from of head Niagara trauma. Falls? But so so then Niagara Falls is drowning, drowning the impact and, of yeah. the water. Well, probably it just knocks you out and then you're underwater. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Yeah, you both, you definitely just you definitely die. <laughs> Most people die. Even with the barrel, no one survived the barrel. People have survived the barrel, but it's not not doesn't go well doesn't usually. Go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because Pippi Longstocking did it once. This is and not. Yeah, this she, is, Pippi survived. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder if I was wearing the right suit and Sam's sweet tailored ass, if uh, I could survive that fall. You know, if he if he uh, cupped my ass. And he was like, uh, you know, yeah, don't don't you should definitely not try that. Yeah, guys, don't don't try. No, no, no. We no, don't want to no, know. No, no, I mean no. don't don't do it. No, don't. Don't do the stuff, okay, guys. <laughs> okay. Speaking of, don't try this at home. The Jackass movie. Have you seen it? There's yes. on Netflix. Yeah. It is those guys. Shout out to yeah that whole crew, Johnny Knoxville, and all these Steve guys. O and it was so funny. It's so funny. And I was so impressed with how they handled like, hey, we're all old now and we're well, still was, doing crazy stuff. It was interesting that, like how they pulled it off because you you know the crew you know and love. Yeah. And then they brought in this new crew of like younger, fun, like yes. 20, and maybe 30 year old uh, kids. I think most of them are in their 20s actually who were down to try all this crazy shit. It's so funny to watch 20 year olds do the stunts and just go like boop boop. And bounce up. And they're like, that hurt. And then you see these guys 50 doing it. And they're like, oh, oh. Like barely fucking move. And you're like, oh, yeah. This happens when you age. This no. is, it's a good thing you had some of them. But it was really entertaining. New, like such crazy new ideas. And I laughed my ass off. So did show. I. Yeah, so funny. This show, I mean, I loved it when it first came out. This show, this this brand can do no wrong by me. I, I just, I LOL at stupid stuff like this all the time. The funniest, or the funniest, the saddest thing I've heard though, is that, that I don't want to give everything away, but that the last bit really actually hurt Knoxville. Oh. Like has some residual effects. You yeah, know? you really got fucked up doing that. <sighs> what these guys won't do for a laugh. It's, I know it just goes to show like how much they like what they do and comedy is. And people do. love it's what just, you do. It's so funny. It's so it's so. And they love they fuck with each other all day. <laughs> yeah, you know that shit. Like so good. It reminds you of being in school. I think that's the part. Yeah, of you, that camaraderie that ends. You have it a little bit, I think, in the like if you're in comedy yeah. because you're in a kind of jokey world. But most comedians draw the line in their circles about like pranking each. You know, they don't yeah. really prank each other. They kind of you kind of do that when you're new, when you're like open micing and and you're figuring this whole world out. You guys joke with each other and people fuck and roast each other. That happens. That's with so fucking funny, dude. It's very fun. Um, but pranks like the way these guys hurt each other yeah. for a laugh you know oh it's so it's so slapdicky yeah i think i love slapdick humor so yeah. much i just love it god bless those dudes yeah you know what's so funny i always think about like those movie those interviews where the actors are like we were doing pranks on each other on the set and i'm like what an annoying asshole yeah. like yeah. You're just, you trying to just work and some uh, dickhead put a bucket of water or whatever I over know. your door like God, fuck right off. Yeah, right? I think I think most people hit an age where they're like, nah. Don't, don't prank do me, shithead. Yeah. I'm tired. That's kind of it kind of you get through that in college. College is kind of the end of that for most yeah. people. Yeah. 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 And even then, it's just kind of mean to fucking It kind of is. Yeah. It is. I mean, it's mostly dudes doing it to dudes. Usually. I mean one time Or sadistic dudes doing it to women. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I knew a few of those. Really? Yeah. yeah. What yeah. did they do? Uh, it's probably better off mic. Sure. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, women generally don't appreciate getting pranked. Yeah, I know. I don't think it's a girl thing. No, I never 
would because I was I was weird because I I wanted girls to like me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You wanted to get laid. Yeah, yeah. That was the you whole. You want to terrify goal. chicks. No, no. Speaking of terrifying chicks, Uh-oh. don't you have a a message to read? Something came in. Oh my God! There's two. Why don't I, I'll let you choose. This seems to be your wheelhouse, my man. <laughs> okay. Gosh, See? these were just sent in for your eyes only. Okay. All right. Um, Ted Bundy tried to get my mom to help him load his boat at Lake uh, Sammamish. Is that how you say it? State Park, Washington, 1974. She said no and later saw him on the news for everything he did. I am dying laughing at the joke that the 50 women deserved it. And he almost... Is <laughs> that Schultz? <laughs> and he oh almost killed me when I was an egg, so that could trigger me. Yeah. Good trigger. That's yeah. pretty wild. Well, good and, for her. And, and you know, by the way, I've just read something that it's true that most attackers and these psychos, they get women that are nice and kind and high and smiling sure. and too timid to say no. So be a bitch. That'll save your life. Well, it's the... Um, be, be unlikable in public. It's the same, the same kind of thing in the wild, uh, meaning in nature that... Yes. Predators go after vulnerable the gazelles, prey, right? the weaker gazelles. Yeah, somebody that's um, like not big and strong. That's not like I mean, if you watch lions hunt, they don't go. Oh, is that the biggest water buffalo? Mm-hmm. Going, they go after the one that's slower, meek, older, sick. Yeah, young. Mm-hmm. Let me so tell you, human predators are the same way. When I walk around in public, I got the butt fuckers on those big <laughs> shades. Remember, what are they called? The Halstons. The butt fuckers? But, remember I called them butt fuckers. Uh, the Halston, nothing to see here. Dark yeah. shades. Don't fucking look at me. Yeah. Not talking to you. Halston, look at his shades. Ladies, go out and buy the Halstons, the sunglasses that he was wearing. Okay. There you go. Nothing to see here, shithead. Keep yeah. it moving. <laughs> that's, that's I wear you... them inside. I wear yeah. them in the grocery store. Don't, look don't at even me. look at me. Don't talk to me. Don't say hello to me. Wow. And, that, and that's not for fans. It's for for dudes. It's just psychos. Yeah. psychos. No, nope, nothing to see here. Well, the world is full of psychos. Yep. Here's another email. Um, (laughs) Hey, Christina and Tom, after watching the latest episode where you talked about Dirty John, I thought I would tell you guys this crazy story. My mom dated John Meehan at all four years of high school and only broke up with him because he was too focused on basketball. But I guess she never realized what a straight up knucklehead he was (laughs) because they stayed friends. Even after that fucking whack job showed up to her wedding a few years after they broke up and tried to sabotage the thing, she still kept in touch with him. What? Still to this day, she has nothing but great things to say about John and refers to him as one of the great loves of her life. Fucking wild. She was interviewed by the show's producers and they told her that the stories and memories she has of John were way too positive. <laughs> and they wouldn't be able to use any of them because they were trying to paint him in a certain light. What's even yeah. more crazy is my mom is a cop here in California what? and works with detectives putting psychos like John away, but she still sees this guy through rose-colored glasses. She even admitted that she named me after him. How fucking strange is that? I'm very happy that she dodged that bullet and I'm not the one who had to stab that chomo in his eyeball. <laughs> Ta-ta there, retards. John. Oh yeah. my God, his name is John after his name is Dirty John. John. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe she knew him when he was younger. In high school, you're you're different. You know, he didn't, Absolutely. Have, to, he didn't have to make a living yet and yeah. maybe he was a little more innocent. And also, yeah, he was probably less, he was probably less manipulative or maybe he was manipulative in the way that was flattering because he he could flatter you know that's a very common thing for psychos like that to do so she, her memories are, are of all those wonderful mm, times with him yeah and she didn't experience the turn yes of him going bad so her that's memories good are are good he was sharpening his tools on her yeah he was like grooming and learning yeah that's fucking wild. it's a really it's a fascinating series um, I haven't seen the the doc on him, the actual. This, I saw the narr- the the scripted version, but the L.A. Times piece on him. If you ever want like a really good uh, sit down read story, is what all this stuff was based on. They did a, an ex like the actual the first the story. The L.A. Bro- Times podcast that they did. Well, the podcast came from the journalist who wrote the story. I'm talking about. I read the story first. Oh, wow. Like there was like a seven part story that's really well written that tells the whole story. 
and it's fucking amazing. I almost want to rewatch the series with you just to relive. Yeah. yeah. It was such a, an incredible story. I normally don't like these stories, but yeah. also um, Indian Matchmaker is back on Netflix. That's a great one. And too. I've been waiting for you to come home so that we can watch that one together. Yeah. We're still we're still doing Stranger Things. We haven't what made it through all that. What if I got matched up with this? So, so, so <laughs> sick and tired of people asking me for a freaking cigarette every 15 or 20 freaking minutes today. I'm going to... If you need a cigarette so bad, go buy your own god darn cigarette. I'm not going to give you a damn cigarette. Now, that could be a match. <laughs> for... Sorry, for... What if I... What if that's how I got matched up? What if they were like, we got you your... Your... Your Indian bride. <laughs> You know? I mean, she seems really nice and really lovely. I do like how she's very natural. You know what I mean? Like she's like, I just let it grow. I don't. I don't. That is natural. That's how I like it. Yeah. Um. Uh. That's really and, cool. And shit. my reaction to that tells me everything she needs to know. Right. <laughs> that's how those chicks are. Oh. Oh, that yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of very angry. The way that you react to the hair on my chin tells me everything I need to know about that's you. So, that's such a TikTok. It's funny because all the chicks who have armpit hair and then they have to show you it on social media, they have to antagonize you with yeah. that. I like to do it the, what you were just, can I do my dates real quick, please? One night only, September 7th in Brooklyn, New York at the Bell House, because I see Bell House the next night. Mm. The MGM Grand in Detroit, September 9th. Nashville, Tennessee, Zanies, October 6th, 7th, and 8th. And then back to Judork Titties to do Caroline's November 4th and 5th. And then Biloxi, Mississippi at the Beau Rivage, Rivage Resort and Casino, November 18th. And then Chicago is moved to April 29th of next year. There you go. This is, some, this is something I should, uh, I'll probably have to say a number of times, but I found out, and this is actually a good thing, but I'm going to Australia oh. in uh, the new year. And the shows that I had January 20th and 21st uh, I was going to do two shows each day and they ended up moving me to a bigger theater so they moved me to the Aware Super Theater so if you had tickets to either show on the 20th your show, your tickets are good for the one show now on the 20th. Does that make sense? And if you had tickets to either show on the 21st, your tickets are good for the one show on the 21st. But we moved venues. We moved to uh, the Aware Super Theater, which also means that there are uh, new tickets available because of the size of the venue. Um, and also, if you are no longer able to attend, you can... Uh, Go to point of purchase, I believe. Ticketmaster will handle your refunds if you can no longer go because of the new uh, time and venue. Um, that's Sydney, January 20th and 21st of 2023. There you go. Nice. We did it. Very did nice. It. Yeah. Oh, I also have one update uh, for the YMH universe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you guys recall a, long, a while ago, I... Um, there was an employee at this pharmacy I frequent. Oh, my God. What? Yeah. And I really, okay. So they look extremely ambiguous yes. wearing their mask. It was during COVID. Sure. And we had come to the conclusion that I would ask them what their pronouns were. Right. And you're going to try to figure out a way to kind of get it a in there. Yeah. So I've been yeah. to this place several times. I figure the employee is gone. Lo and behold... They're back. Mm -hmm. They're back. And they were working in the pharmacy. And I texted you immediately. I called you, actually, because I was so pumped. You were so really worried about I called about you. You did not answer. So then I had to text you, like, dude, the Zimzer is back. And How straight I, are you? What was that? <laughs> How straight are you? How straight are you? How straight yeah. are you? Yeah. Well, and, you ain't that straight. <laughs> <laughs> so... So then, okay, so I, I, you were like, you got to ask, you got to ask their pronouns. Yep. And I had a uh, sir with me. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm, this is it. I worked up the courage. This is the moment. I got to the front of the line and then they go to the back of the pharmacy to do phone calls. And now a different employee comes up and I was like, dude, I was this close to finding out. And so here's the deal, man. They don't have a mask anymore. So I got to see the face and it's completely could go either way. Really? It could completely go the body, everything. The only thing that's a little off or what that is tell is there's hair 
on their arms. Dark yes. hair. But yeah. it could be either. Either way, yeah. But I know I did take one. Do you guys want to see them? Oh my god! I did. I took a sneaky pic. I'll show you, you guys. Yeah. All right. Well, don't. Yeah. Not on air. I would never show it publicly. But this person and I, like, I was like, I was so stoked. I almost was like, hey, come over here. I want to ask you something. But I don't want to call them over and be like, and what were you going to say? I'd be like, listen, I've, I've. I know I've been coming to you for months and months, and I I hope you don't think I'm rude, but I'm dying to know what are your pronouns because I want to like be that. respectful. Don't say it like. Well, you, how do you, I you say? Had it, you had it, but don't say. It, but I've been dying to know. Look, what are you? You just. <laughs> no, no, no. Do you think you, I'm on you, the spectrum, you, Tom? You you were almost there. Okay, go ahead. You say, hey, you know, I I haven't seen you in a while, and I've I've been coming, and I, and I I just wanted to ask. Because I've seen you so long, I would realize I never, I never asked, what are your pronouns? Okay. So you may get like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I just wanted to, I, I realized I forgot to do this. It's almost like yeah. saying, I've seen you for a while, I forgot to ask your name. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to, yeah, I want to be. So you're like polite about it. Cool. You know? And I do, I want to be You don't want to be like, I've been dying to know, and my <laughs> friends and I are talking about it. I got a hundred dollar bet. Now... But then here's what's going to happen. What? What if they're like, it's they, them, and then I- That's fine. But then, then I you know. still don't know what the mystery is. I still don't know oh, what- Oh, you know what the mystery is. I still feel like there's more to know. I, I, I don't know. What well, if, then what? get their phone number. Okay? Get their phone number. I can't Stop believe- calling me daddy. How are you not, you're not as fired up as I am about this mystery? I, I was excited uh, for you. I was excited for you. Babe, do you think I'm on the spectrum because I don't know what's inappropriate? I do. I, I do. I think, should I take a test? I think you should. <laughs> yeah. You, you, and? Oh, yeah. I forgot. On where my mom said I did take a test, I'm only three points away from being on the spectrum. It's literally like one question away from me being on the spectrum. I think I might be, because females can mask it. Females can mask what? Being on the spectrum, because okay. we're more social. Oh. It can mimic things better than you, because you're a guy. Guys are naturally more autistic leaning. Like, you guys are, well, you are more antisocial by nature. Like, I can be social. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What? Let's, let's just move on. Okay. Thor is back, and so is his fat suit that a lot of people weren't happy about a few years ago. For so much of society, a fat person is a failed thin person. Avengers Endgame, wanting to use this shorthand, decided to make Thor fat. <sighs> Sociologist Edward Avery Natal writes that even early superheroes have lean and muscular bodies, but modern superheroes' bodies are basically unattainable. Chris Hemsworth, you can find his exercise routine. It's not the kind of thing that someone who is not being paid to be pure muscle could do. Let's see how impossible this is. Over time, male superheroes' muscles got bigger, female superheroes' waists got smaller and breasts got larger, and non-binary representation was really lacking. And now you might be wondering, where did fatphobic ideas even come from? Sociologist Sabrina String says that when Europeans started enslaving people, they used skin color to determine who was enslaved and who was free. But String says that as mixed race populations grew, Europeans looked for a new signifier, body type. The idea is that black people don't have control over their sexual or oral appetites. That proves that we are the ones who should manage them. After that, String says insurance companies developed arbitrary standards for what a healthy weight looked like. And soon after, white American doctors came up with another arbitrary standard, body mass index. Having a prominent movie like that, which lifts up getting lower on the scale, can really trigger people who have suffered with eating disorders in the past. There are so many young people right now in the body positive movement saying, we love ourselves. That is such a beautiful thing. I disagree. <laughs> yeah, I, I um, you know, I think the whole fun of, of a superhero is that it's a super human, yeah. you know? Supermodel. Yeah, super. They're super. Super I mean, hero. Super. Thor is not a regular dude. Superman, he's not a regular guy. He's a super man. He's not supposed to look like 
every other guy, he's supposed to look like basically unattainable. Yeah. Like, because he's not a regular dude. He's And we're making movies which are to make money. So you yeah, pay to see the thing that's special. And it's an escape. It's supposed to be a fantasy. And then the second part of this that it gets tied to is like the idea that, you know, here's the thing. Not everybody could get to that Hemsworth body. That's that's true. But if you try if people really tried to get Chris Hemsworth's body, like if you were like, I want I want to look like that, and you really put the the time and the effort in to the nutrition and the diet, with that being the goal, even if you never got there, you'd be way better off than if you were like, I'm not going to try to do that. Do you yeah, understand? I like agree. You, I you agree. Would, then to just give up. If you were just like, I'm just not going to try, that's fine. But if you go, I'm going to try to look like that. Yeah. And you fall short, you'd still look way better than gonna, you do. And you know what's interesting is all of the science, which we don't even know if it's factually accurate. I love when these videos just put together a mishmash and you're like, I don't even know if that's factually accurate. Sure. But the whole point of this was to say the reason it shouldn't happen is because it may trigger people with eating disorders. It may trigger <laughs> fat people who aren't happy that they're fat. Right. And it might bum them out when they see somebody who's super right. hot. Right. So you're afraid of bumming people out? Yeah. That's why we can't have a hot it might, superhero? It might, be, it might be make people sad <laughs> so hot. that they're fat and not doing anything about it. <laughs> That's the message here. Don't bum out these lazy fats. I know. Who are probably poor too. You know? <laughs> I mean... Yeah, it's just wild that we have this much concern for people's feelings. I mean, because it's silly. I don't know. To me, I look at the superhero guy in these things and I go like, damn, look at that dude. That's fucking incredible that he was able yeah, it's awesome. to transfer, like to look like that. Because I, I recognize how dedicated he had to be to do that. Yeah. He had to really be you dedicated. You respect the discipline and the work. Yeah, of yeah. course. It's like... If you go to a bodybuilding, if you see bodybuilders on Instagram, yeah. right? You see them just posing. You're like, that person lives disciplined it to look like that. And you respect the work. Of course. I know. Basically, it's like, like you said, they're lazy and they're um, they're victims and they're crybaby pussies. I think if you don't. And, well, hold on. And we're letting the crybaby pussies win versus yeah. being like, stop being a crybaby pussy and then look better and then you won't be so fucking triggered. Or, you know, don't go to the movies. Don't go to the movies, maybe cray don't. baby pussy fatso. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe make a a, a new movie called uh, Super Fatty, and it's this yeah, it's this hero who he sits at home, and uh, you know he just he texts people to do things. <laughs> he just orders pizza. Yeah, and there's food always delivered, and then he's just like, we did it again. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But does anybody want to see a fat Thor? No. no. And here's nobody the, wants a fat is, Thor. This goes dude. back to the other thing too, is that. Of course, it's great to feel good. You should feel good about. It. You should love yourself. It's important to love yourself, right? But this whole thing where we where we lie about what is attractive or desirable, like what do most women uh, react? Like, how do most women feel when they see a fit, muscular guy? Hot city, bang city. It's an attractive guy. Yeah. So a high why? value male. Why are we why are we going to act like that's no longer true? That's what is attractive. I know. It's like what do most men feel or see when they see a, you know, a swimsuit model. A swimsuit model like a <laughs> well, a uh, old school swimsuit <laughs> model. But I'm saying like a round ass, yeah. a small waist, yep. breasts, right? And you go like, "Oh, look at this like, you know, quote perfect body." Like what do most men react to? They go, yeah. "It's Bang City." It's Bang She's City. She's hot. Because I think if you look back even historically, m musculature, being fit, athletic, yeah. Yeah. virile, fertile, these are just markers of health, of good health. It is. And your your brain is also not just telling you that it's aesthetically pleasing. It's that like this is a person it is desirable to be with because they are a healthy specimen. They take care of you yeah. and you want to reproduce with them. Yeah. You mean your fantasies, your your deep sexual fantasies aren't inclusive? No. <laughs> no. It's so silly. Hey, just for the I'm just curious for the record, can we look up how many issues of the swimsuit uh swimsuit, what is it, swimsuit special edition? Sports Illustrated. How many did they end up selling with the uh the fatso? <laughs> 
from the oldie on there. Because I'll tell you, when I when I went to the Aero Puerto, I guarantee all, all the covers of the Kardashian were gone, and then all that were left were the fatso and the oldie. So I know for a fact that they're they're not gobbling them up. Yeah. Like, I'm curious how how many they sold. If you could find out, I don't know. He's never going to find Look at this. how many issues of fat sports. I mean, I mean you're definitely not going to get the result not like that. Be, yeah. Oh, God. Maybe 2022 yeah. Sports Illustrated. Annie, can you help him? Or how about Zolo? Zolo's a good go guy. Sorry, man, I'm switching. Oh. <laughs> Zolo could have done this faster. God, is he in the room now? Just, I would delete fat. Yeah, they're not going to call her gonna... fat. You're so bad at this. <laughs> How about you look it up? We'll get back to you. Let's talk. Yeah. It's going to take him for the rest Sounds of the episode. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Unbelievable. I mean, you. I don't know. You I mean, are completely retarded. <laughs> um, you are. Com oh, I also have another thing I'd like to bring up with you. Yeah, sure. Fiji, I used to believe was a superior water. Yeah. This summer, I started drinking Avion. Mm -hmm. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Avion. I, I yeah. believe Avion, Avion mm -hmm. is now the superior water, and I think it should be changed as the official YMH water. And denied. Why? Because it is not. You can. You're welcome to bring in some of that water and enjoy it yourself. But you why know, is it? Have you tried it? Of course, I've tried it. You don't think it, it's superior to? F I do not. I do not. I'm a fan of the mineral silica, which is uh, prominent in Fiji water. It does not exist in Evian, and the taste. I find an Avion is much, much more favorable than. Okay. Well, you know then, who hates Avion? Who? Is Agent Jeans. Really? Hates it. Wow. What does he hate about it? He just thinks it's trash. Uh, wow. Okay. I don't feel as strongly as him, but I do prefer Fiji. Okay. Well, agree to disagree because I think Avion is my new favorite and I'm okay. going to start drinking that. I'm going to bring in my own liter bottles from now on. And bring in whatever you That's want. That's what I've been into. Yeah. Do it. it do what you want. Yeah. Same strokes, different everybody. <laughs> um, here we go. How do you make, um, what is it, kombucha? Bueno, como decíamos en el video número uno, vamos a lavar nuestro hongo madre con vinagre de manzana para que se le quite. Apple vinegar. Apple. Todo lo morenito. Perdón. Todo lo morenito que tiene arriba antes de. Why are you making me watch this? I haven't seen this. You know I don't like this. Okay. Now I can't watch it, babe. Pasar a nuestro a nuestro recipiente. Okay. You rub in no this de apple in the air. I guess it's pretty strong smell. No, no debemos de sentir asco. This isn't a good cooking video. El hongo es muy saludable y tiene un sabor como de té. She can't do it. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Whew. You know, it's been a while. Why don't we get to your stuff? Oh, fuck me. <sighs> what is she eating? It's like a worm. But she didn't even put sauce on it. She just ate it with no sauce. Now Annie? you would, Annie, you would do that <laughs> with or without mayo. Man, I can't even fucking breathe right now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, what well, hot sauce? It. You wouldn't even do that with hot sauce. What Looks like she's got hot sauce. Nah, there's nothing could save this one. No, no. no not hot even sauce mayonnaise with ketchup. No. 
I found another incorrect this sign. Her. A very wrong sign. A feminine care aisle. Let's talk about it again. How not all women are menstruators and not all menstruators are women. And no, the term menstruators isn't meant to simplify cis women into just having a period. It's really about simply using more inclusive language to talk about periods and those who experience them. <laughs> if it were my ideal world, all of those aisles that carry tampons and pads would say period care because feminine is the word for gender expression, which is not equating to any sort of men. So you, this is a, a really good video to explain, like, I don't care how hot a woman is. Yeah, that, this is the you video know? I was talking the, about. Yeah, right. This is so the exact like, video. If Margot Robbie was like this and yeah. she was like, you want to go have sex now? I'd be like, no. I'm, Done. I'm, uh, yeah, I would like you to enjoy the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. So I did a... Goodbye. A reaction video to this. I literally said nothing. Yeah. I just made expressions. Yeah. TikTok removed it for abusive behavior, like hateful whatever speech. Yeah. So How? Stupid. How does that happen? Because somebody reports you some little fucking twat with their feelings hurt. But I mean, do, there's no review process. Well, then I appeal, appeal it, and then it gets reinstated. But someone reports you and then you appeal it. It's oh. the dumbest thing. So yeah, this chick, so this chick's really into her period. It's really fascinating if you, it's it's actually, I think, she, yeah, she's really into her period. Like she'll show you. How this is your mission in life. <laughs> just, this, like this, for all the, like for everything you can get behind in this world, for you, this to be like, this is the one. I just, I love people. I love weird people. I love people is not your fucking mission I like mission weird statement. people, dude. It's, like, this is just what rings my bell. I'm really into that. Just Treating like how, experience. How you like murder? Is for gender expression. Yeah. Gender expression this. is different I can't, from gender I don't want to hear this anymore. Is, Good. So anyway, she'll show you her dirty period panties. Like, she'll she'll be like, I'm changing my... It's, yay, it's day one of my period. And then she'll take off her dirty pad and show you the blood. I wonder how this it's started It's so for her. gnarly. Oh, I know. I she When she first got her period, she was shamed by... There you go fellow classmates and then she made it her mission go. to stop period shaming. there's always a story yeah. like i actually think it's i like her mission i, I think what she's doing is really cool mm -hmm. in terms of nor normalizing periods but i mean this is just it i just don't like the condescending tone of it yeah. all like let me educate you on what yeah. needs to happen at target today it's like of course listen there's like kids that probably don't know what a period is yet maybe if that that word is up yeah. there they have to mask the meaning well, a little. You know, it's not. It's not that serious. It's not. Not everything is an offense to you. They should do. A, a, you know? I think she would be blown away if uh, if somebody showed her the stats on how many women <laughs> buy tampons, uh, you know, or how many times yeah. it's bought for a woman. She, yeah. She'd probably be like, "What?" Really? <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's crazy. Yeah. I, I Five just, things I would not order from a restaurant as a professional chef. Let's go. This one's cool. I would not order any kind of fish on the weekend, or Monday or Tuesday, unless it's coming from the dock itself. Do not order the fish. Second, burgers. You are literally taking your life into your own hands if you eat it anything less than well done. Any kind of special bidet, I would stay away from that. They're just trying to use up stuff that hasn't sold. Same thing, soup of the day. Mm, it's all leftovers. Mostly bits of stuff that was just a little bit left. And unless you absolutely have to have it, I would skip dessert too, because chances are it was made more than a week ago. Sorry. Very cool. Very nice. I know. I thought you'd like that. I no, mean, yeah, it reminded me of Bourdain in, yeah. in Kitchen Confidential. He said a lot of those same things. Yeah. Yeah. He did. He said, never eat the swordfish. It's full of worms. Right. Don't and he, eat. And he said going out to restaurants is for the, like, like the tools go out on the weekend. He's like, if you want yeah. good stuff at a restaurant, you go out like on Tuesday or, or Wednesday or something, you know? Yeah. 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 And he said the same thing about specials and. Yeah. yeah. And don't eat the mussels if they're, when they're steamed, if you have to for, force them open. Never pry open a muscle. Yeah. It should just open. Yep. Don't eat the closed shell. <sighs> <sighs> Here's your girl. She's doing yoga, babe. I mean, <laughs> isn't that cool? Yeah, she is cool. <laughs> She's like, I think the tag on it was like doing yoga at the beach. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, can she like unhinge her hip bones? Like that's I think she's wild. She's just super flexible. She's been practicing that for a while. You think I'm going to start practicing? <laughs> 
Does that excite you sexually as a man? I mean, her doing that there doesn't. (laughs) I think the position's pretty cool. Yeah. I think it's pretty cool that she's capable of that. Okay. Yeah. So if I did that, that would arouse you or would it weird you out? Like, babe, you've been trying this? You've been practicing this? I think a combination of both. Yeah. Yeah. What if I did that? Like I've been, I've been working on this for months. I have something our, to show you. Our anniversary's coming up, and I'm like, babe, I've been working for a year on this one. Yeah. And you're like, what? What? <laughs> this bitch is crazy, dude. <laughs> yeah. Chubby Bobby, Chubby Billy, Chubby Billy, Chubby Billy, Chubby Chubby. You said Chubby. God. Just a cheetah just hanging out. And she's tickling his paws and his belly. Hee <laughs> LOL. Just the fastest killer on the planet. Yep. With his balls intact. Did yeah, you see that? I did, yeah. It was I nice that they left him. I know I've never seen a cheetah's balls before. Yeah. It's a first. <laughs> it's a first for me too. It's kinda cool. <sighs> So this girl. I was ten. I was seven. I was ten. Still seven. I was ten. So for those of you who don't understand, she just split her tongue in half and she's in a lot of pain, and it's a seven out of ten. That's like day two of having her tongue split. <sighs> I mean, uh, I wonder if you can talk eventually. But yeah, you can talk with your tongue split, right? I want to go home. I hope so. I hope she can talk. Oh, I really want to wrestle the night. <laughs> My back hurts. But I'm going to do it. What? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's like... He wants to wrestle tonight, but his back hurts. Oh. But he's still going to do it, so don't worry. He's still going to do it. Who's he going to wrestle with? I don't know. Sam Taylor in Hong Kong? Yeah. But I like that he has his shirt off and he's telling you with his shirt off. It's a very cool way to tell, yeah. Jumping on this trend to talk about 10 things I would never do after being a police officer. Number one, never let someone live with you unless you know them very, very well. Once they're at your place a certain amount of time, The police can't kick them out. You can't kick them out. You have to get them formally evicted through the court system, and that is a pain in the ass. Two, when you buy a big item, TV, iPhone, anything like that, write down the serial number somewhere that you can find it later. If someone steals it, if you lose it, the only way we can link it to you is the serial number. Number three, I thought this one went without saying. It doesn't. Lock your car and lock your house. Your stuff will get stolen. I promise you. Number four, if you get into a car accident, don't just exchange information and agree to work it out, work it out amongst each other. Call the cops, get a report. You will thank me. Number five, I would never own a house or have an apartment without a camera set up on the outside. Nowadays, it's how we solve pretty much everything we need to solve is cameras. Get a camera, they're cheap now. Number six is another one I thought went without saying, but it doesn't. Don't give your information to anybody over the phone that you don't know. Social security number, bank account information, trust me, it happens. People do it all the time. Seven, if you're ever approached on the street at night and someone wants to know what time it is, hey, can you check what time it is? You're basically about to get robbed. Keep walking. Don't acknowledge it. Number eight, after being a police officer, I'm just not going to let my son go to people's houses if I don't know them, period. I don't know what they're about. I don't know what kind of things they do at their house. I gotta know him first. Number nine, I don't care how friendly your dog is, how well he listens to your training. Don't be having your dog off leash when you're taking him on a walk or when you're out in public. You have no idea what your dog is going to do. They're animals at the end of the day. You can't control them all the time. And maybe someone else has a dog that doesn't like other dogs. Leash him up. Last one, should not take a cop to tell you this. Don't drink and drive. Okay. Ever. When you've had too much to drink, do not drive. That should be a given. Respect the life of other people. 
All right. I mean, cool to know. Jeez. Yeah, those are good. Right? Some of them are, you know. Common sense. Yeah. But apparently people don't do that shit. Yeah, that uh, what time is it thing's a good one. Not scary. Yeah, one of my um, friends got robbed one time. Um, and it was daytime by somebody saying, hey, can you break um, a 50? Oh, my God. And you I say, hey, man, do you, you have change for a 50? And he <laughs> pulled out his wallet. That's it. And then as he was getting cash out, the guy like <sighs> grabbed the cash, hit him, and ran. You know? So... It's, it's more like, the, you know, you said nothing to see here. It's more like if a stranger's ever like, uh, hey, do you, no. Nah. nah. No, I don't. No, I do not, sir. No. Mm -mm. Keep it moving. Listen carefully. Come closer. This is crazy. This is a breast implant that he pulled out of a woman's chest. It hardened inside of the it happens a lot it calcifies that's not sheetrock <laughs> that's calcium that accumulates in there that's about the most i've ever seen look at that it's on a breast implant and these are saline implants but that's from chronic inflammation and that's what happens inside these implants that's the kind of stuff that happens in there it's horrible that's if they're wet they just look like like a gum but it's just calcium with moisture in there and it hardens because of it's a foreign object in your calcifies, body. Calcifies, right? I imagine so, that. I imagine your body is just like, what is what this? What is this? Yeah. Gosh, that's terrible. Fuck. Sermento <laughs> 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 this is from your show last night. This is Edmonton. You wouldn't let this guy go down on you? <sighs> Babe. What? You don't think his skills... Look at his mouth. Stop it. They're freaking out. They love him. Oh... This chick's loving. Yeah. Awesome. Isn't that wild? Love him. I love him. What a gig. I used to pick up dead bodies for beer money. <laughs> that probably says a lot about me. Um, when I was younger, my dad had a funeral business, and I would work with him to make spare cash. So one day, we get a call to pick up a guy who'd been dead for several days. So we went down to a pretty nasty row house in Baltimore. This dude had done a full Elvis Presley. He had died on the can. His last worldly endeavor was dropping the kids at the pool. Ironically, around his apartment appeared to be, there appeared to be piles of human excrement, and I didn't see any signs of a dog, so maybe, just maybe, he should have kept pooping on the rug. I don't know. Nonetheless, we got our gurney in place, and I got a hold of the ankles. My dad got under the armpits. Holy and, shit. you know, one, two, three, we pulled, and nothing. He didn't budge. All he did was kind of aspirate a little bit, kind of, uh, and putrid smell came out of the mouth, flies. It was, uh, it was nasty. It was nasty. Once we got beyond that, we went for a second attempt. I got the ankles. Dad got under the armpits. We yanked a little harder this time. He came up about, about an inch, but that was it. And my dad was like, what is going on here? I mean, this dude was emaciated, 80 pounds soaking wet. This should have been easy. So my dad's like, son, he seems to be stuck. I'm going to have to give it a little ass this time. So this time I got oh. the ankles. I put a foot up on the commode for a little bit of leverage. Dad got under the armpits. One, two, three. We yanked this little son bitch. He came straight up in the air. And we both just looked in horror. Dropped him right on the ground. It wasn't his weight holding him on the toilet. It was his balls. All the fluid in his body had drained down to his testicles and they were bigger than the hole in the toilet seat. So they locked him on the toilet. My dad just looked at the dude and said, hey, shit, I guess I know what killed him. That was a classic dad. Cool story, huh? That was a cool story. 
Did you like it? I did like it. It was I know. a good story. I figured yeah. you would like this, this guy. This guy would can. be great to hear stories from. Yeah. 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 I love these stories of uh, finding dead people and how they clean them up. Oh, my God. And, like, yeah, someone's got to do it. Someone's they really got do. to do it. Yeah. What a gig. My goodness. What would you rather do, clean out the honey buckets or do what this guy did for for beer money? Um, fuck, that's a, that is gnarly. I Hold think, on, I have three gigs for you, okay? okay? Would you rather clean out the honey buckets, uh, be a third world prostitute? Oh my God. Or do what this guy does for money? I think the buckets... Wow. See, I, I mean, they're all terrible. Which one would you choose? Not the the prostitutes. Definitely not happening because that just ruins your whole life. Like your whole everything. Everything is yeah. just terrible. I might do crime scene cleanup because I think the pay is probably really good, and you've got awesome stories for days. And once you get over the initial shock of the disgustingness, yeah, I feel like the honey bucket. Like you ever worked. Like I, when I when I worked at Starbucks, I would smell coffee all day. Yeah. And it like dis it messes up your sense of smell sure, and your sure. senses. Like smelling poo poo and pee pee all day maybe would mess you up. It kinda of, but I think smelling um decomposing bodies. Is I know, worse. but I think you can't you wear a mask like but a hazmat. Everybody that I've I've talked to people that have done this, they say that that decomp smell The smell is like nothing. Yeah, it's burned else. into your brain forever. Shit as that bad as it is, just you know, you've smelled it. You yeah. smell bad shit stuff and you kind of move on. Man, this is such a... I think that might be a good one to end on. I don't sure. know. Uh, there's more, but, you know, I think it's a good one to wrap out on. It was fun. All right. Um, <laughs> who's, be, who's the hooker? In a dog? Listen. You'd be a third world prostitute? Really? Yeah. You're... I'm a people pleaser. I like to meet people. I think I'm good Dude, with them. And... Guys would jizz well, on your yeah. fucking face all day. Yeah, and you would rather be a hooker too. Stop. You'd be getting a third world hooker by dudes. You know that, right? Sometimes dudes. Sometimes you'd be on the other end of it. Sometimes it'd be women. You no, know, it wouldn't. No, be. it's never women. It's, it'd it's be men. rare. I think there'd be a few though. Okay, <laughs> one out of a thousand. But, but, a woman. but I'm talking third world. Like you're in India in a slum. Yeah. And it's gnarly. Have you seen those documentaries? I mean, I've smelled poo poo and I've heard things about deceased smells. You guys don't know shit about yeah, third know. world prostitutes. Yes. Yeah. No, you know it's what? I, I want this for you. I want you to become. <laughs> I know. Um, thank you again for watching and we'll see you guys soon. Sup, Kang? Just let me eat you one time. Okay. And you're going to, I guarantee you, you're going you're gonna to ask me to stay to your house. You're going to sleep for three days, my baby. I can cook for you, clean up your house. When you come home, baby, you just got to jump in the tub with all the bubbles. Once I touch your booty, I'm going to make you cry. Are you going to Guess what? One time, one, one, one time, one time. that full episode of your mom's house are your jeans as high and tight as it can be i doubt it watch some more clips dude look at that one watch that one right here or maybe here maybe here maybe, <laughs> maybe you should subscribe that way every time a new video gets posted you'll be notified stay in the know jeans subscribe now